Welcome to Beat Diabetes. Today we're going to talk about the very first step to beating diabetes, or I could say to reversing diabetes. In a way, this is what I would love to have done with our challenge, folks, when we've done our challenges, but usually we did it in four months and there just wasn't time to even really take the, a whole month and do this first step. But we're going to show you how to do it today. And this is really, it works better for those who do the challenge in six months. And even though we're not doing a challenge at the first part of this year, we'll probably do one in the latter part of the year. Uh, you can do your own personal challenge. Now, uh, I'm sure some of you are intrigued when I showed in the thumbnail that the first step to beating diabetes is not restricting your carbohydrates. And you're saying, Dennis, have you changed your mind? Well, no, <laughs> I have not changed my mind. But really, there is a step that should even go before cutting your carbs. In fact, I'm going to shock you even more. In this first step, I would encourage you to eat some high-carb meals. And some of you are saying, well, I know you've lost your mind now. Uh, but uh, just hear me out. Here's the thing. The very first step to beating diabetes, in my opinion, is to figure out what's going on in your body, to become a researcher on your own body and to start collecting data. Uh, I believe in data. I believe in finding out what's going on. And the average person, when they find out they've got diabetes, they don't have a clue what's going on. Uh, the doctor says you've got it and you, you've heard from others and your doctor will probably tell you this is serious, this, could, this can really harm you. Uh, if you've got a good doctor, he may encourage you. If you've got a not so good doctor, he may just say, well, it's progressive and it's never going to be any better. Uh, but if you take meds, maybe you can slow it down a bit, uh, which is a really terrible advice to give you basically no hope, to take all hope from you, pull the rug out from you in terms of hope. So what is this first step? It's to collect data by researching your body by doing what are called postprandial blood sugar tests. But that's a fancy word that means post-meal blood sugar test. The idea is this. You find out where you are before your meal, you eat your meal, and then you wait about an hour and 15 minutes, maybe an hour, and you test your blood sugar to see how much that particular meal has spiked your glucose. And if you will do this consistently, you will learn so much. But more important than just learning, you're going to become motivated. The problem is people tend to rely on the so-called experts to help them out with diabetes. Well, I get that. I understand that. That's, in a lot of ways, that's reasonable. If I want to learn golf, I don't want to go to a guy that knows nothing about golf. I want to go to a professional, somebody who's really good at it. Teach me how to play golf. If I want to become a mechanic and I'm a young man and I don't know too much about how to fix cars and how to do mechanical things, then I want to apprentice under somebody who does know a lot. So a lot of times we think, yeah, well, when it comes to diabetes, I got to go to the experts. But here's the problem. The experts aren't, they aren't uh, completely agreed. In fact, they're often totally at odds with each other. And so you got this expert saying that and this expert saying that, and you're like, who in the world do I believe? And I'll try a little bit of this and I'll try a little bit of that. And nothing seems to work. I believe that the very first step should be to take a whole month, 30 days or 31 as the case may be, take a month and start testing your blood sugar after many of your meals. Don't let a day go by without testing your blood sugar and figuring out how that meal affected me. And the reason I said I'd like for you to try some high carb meals in this first month is I want you to see the difference between a high carb meal and a low carb meal, not because Dennis Pollack said something or not because Jason Fung said something or not because uh, Dr. Furman said something or anybody else. I want you to find out what your glucose meter, we call him Mike, but any glucose meter will tell you as to the difference between those kind of meals. And I want you to do it again and again, take a whole month and make sure you include, include if you can afford to, some high carb meals and some low carb meals and notice the difference between the two. 
Now, I said if you can afford to. Here is the one caveat to that. And that is, and, and I can only say for me, you're going to have to make these kind of decisions for yourself. But for me, if my, blood, if my A1C was in the double digits, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, uh, numbers I consider to reflect a dangerous con uh, condition where you are damaging your body every single day by high glucose and probably high insulin. If my blood sugar was in the double digits, I don't think I would even take a month to do this research. I think I'd research on the fly and I think I'd get right into the low carb diet. But if you can afford it, if you are not so high that you feel it's dangerous to your body, I would advise people, or at least I would do it for myself, to just go on eating like you've been eating for an entire month. You've been eating this way all these years. It probably won't hurt you to take one more month and eat the way you've been eating, which would mean some high-carb meals, but insert some low-carb meals. And notice the difference with these post-meal blood sugar tests. Notice how much difference there is between eating a meal of lasagna versus eating a salad and a steak. And one thing that you will find if you do some reading uh, of these different uh, people that talk about diabetes the ones who, who promote a low-carb diet, like myself and uh, so many others, I'm just one of many, but the ones that promote a low-carb diet are the ones that will encourage you to test your blood sugar. The ones that promote a higher-carb diet, oftentimes they'll say, don't eat any meat, don't eat any fat, just keep the fat low, 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 but don't be afraid of carbs, eat lots of carbs, carbs are your friends, carbs are your buddies. Those folks are strangely silent when it comes to encouraging you to, encouraging you to test your blood sugar. They'll say almost nothing about it. I mean, you can read an entire book, big, long, thick book, and they won't say word one about testing your blood sugar. Now, to his credit, uh, but uh, I, I will say this, this is one of the guys from the other side, the uh, low-fat, high-carb, relatively high-carb diet. The one... One thing he does say is try to go for low glycemic foods. He does mention testing blood sugar at one point and only one point as far as I know in this book. It's called Reversing Dr. Neil Bernard's Program for Reversing Diabetes. He mentions it like once. No, but what he says is, in my opinion, pretty shabby. He says, of course, so he throws in those... Uh, patronizing words, of course. Of course, if you check your blood sugar after just about any meal, it'll be higher than it was before. Well, there's truth to that. He says, however, don't let that turn you against starchy foods and back toward fatty and high protein foods. Here's why. So he will admit, he has to admit if, if, if he's honest and if he wants to deal with this at all, most people won't even deal with it. They won't even talk about it. They won't touch it. Most people from this side, the low fat, high carb, uh, encouragers. They won't even talk about it at all. Strangely silent. But he will mention it. But here's what he says. The fat in fish and chicken will tend to arrest your weight loss. It will also tend to aggravate your insulin resistance. So he's saying fat will make you more insulin resistant. It will aggravate your insulin resistance. He says, here's what happen, happens in a typical case. A man has heard that carbs are bad. Or perhaps he notices his blood glucose has gone up briefly, and he throws in the word briefly. Hey, it's not just briefly for most diabetics. Carbs will put you up in the stratosphere with your blood glucose for a long time. But anyway, he says he notices it goes up briefly. In other words, it's no real big deal. Goes up briefly after a meal of rice or starchy vegetables. He decides to avoid, avoid carbohydrates. He adds fish and chicken back to his diet. So he's gone off the fish and chicken. He won't even talk about meat here, uh, beef. <laughs> but anyway, oh, this is so sad. Anyway, he says he decides to avoid carbohydrates, adds fish and chicken back to his diet. First, it seems like a good change. His blood glucose does not spike strongly after meals because there's very little starch in his meals to provide 
are to provide, yeah, he says provide glucose. Aha, he says, I found the diet to keep my blood sugar down. Over the next several days, however, he notices his fasting blood glucose values are heading in the wrong direction. In other words, he starts adding uh, meat back into his diet and at first it doesn't spike, but within a few days it's starting to spike like crazy from all this meat and all this fat. And they go up bit by bit after a week or two, the rise is significant. Now what he says, this is what's going on. He says, in avoiding carbohydrate, he was left with fat, which tends to increase insulin resistance and protein, which has problems of its own. So he's like, fat will make you more insulin resistant. Well, <laughs> Dr. Bernard, there are millions, millions, hundreds of thousands, at least I would say millions of people that would say, nope, doesn't work that way for me. And I'm one of them. I eat meat freely. I eat saturated fat freely. My latest A1Cs are between 4.8 and 5.0. How are yours, Dr. Bernard? It's working for me. And I'm not some novice at this. I've been doing this 20 plus years. Eating meat freely, eating fat freely, and more freely the older I get. And the more fat I eat and the less carbs I eat, the lower my A1C becomes. Now, he says it tends to promote, fat tends to promote insulin or increase insulin resistance. Tends to. He doesn't list any study, any research, any evidence of that. He just, and he uses this throughout the book several places, tends to increase insulin resistance if you eat fat. So that's all he can say about testing your blood sugar. In other words, don't trust it. Don't rely on it. It's just going to lead you astray. So just take my word for it. And I'm convinced one of the reasons people find help in watching my channel is that I don't say take my word for it. I say, take Mike's word for it. Who's Mike? Mike the glucose meter. Mike the meter, I call him. Take his word for it. How are you doing? <laughs> and uh, if you're doing well, then you probably go in the right direction. Of course, it'll take some time. So my advice, my encouragement for people that are just starting out to try to beat diabetes, and maybe they're even confused and they're not sure who to believe, who to trust, who to rely on is, Forget about Dennis and forget about these other guys on YouTube and all the books you've read. Forget about it for at least a month. For about a month, insulate yourself from guys like me and anybody else that's talking about beating diabetes and get yourself a glucose meter or a CGM and watch what happens after your, me your meals and make sure you include some high uh, carb meals and high glycemic meals. Have a big old baked potato and some mac and cheese and have a nice dessert. Lots of carbs and see what happens to your blood sugar. Then have a salmon and uh, maybe a couple of uh, stalks of celery with some peanut butter on them and see what happens there. That's what happened to me. That's, that was the ticket to my freedom from the land of diabetes. That was my passport to get out of diabetes into non-diabetes and keep driving my glucose down. The older I get, the better my blood sugar and my A1C are. That's weird. That's not supposed to happen. It's, diabetes is supposed to be progressive, but it's not that way for me and it's not that way for many. We've got uh, Bill Burley in whom I interviewed. He's like 76 years old and it's just been over the last few years. He has thoroughly whipped diabetes. 76 and yet his blood sugar is better than it was 25 years ago. His A1C is better than it was 25 years ago. His fasting glucose is better than it was 25 years ago. What happened to Bill? And he was overweight most of his life and he's dropped like 150 pounds now. What happened to this guy? I'll tell you what happened. He started testing his blood sugar. He didn't rely on me. When he first saw me, he thought I was a charlatan. He thought I was some kind of a quack, a fake. What is this preacher trying to talk to us about blood sugar uh, for? He doesn't know anything. And he saw a, a video I made about eating hamburgers and he went out and bought a bunch of hamburgers. And he was like, I'm going to prove this preacher's crazy. And he found out they didn't do hardly anything to raise his blood sugar. And then he started to listen to me a little bit more seriously. But I'm saying your first step ought not to be to listen to me. You get that glucose meter and you listen to him, Mike the meter. But don't just do it a little bit. Don't just do it occasionally. Do it for a month. Don't let a day go by during this first month where you're really trying to beat diabetes. Don't let a day go by that you don't do one of these post-meal tests 
and do some high carb meals and do some low carb meals. Do some meals that are lots of fat and some meals with almost no fat, but lots of carbs. Collect the data, write it down, put it on a spreadsheet if you know how to do that. If not, just take out a piece of notebook paper and a pen and start writing it down. Before the meal, 122. After the meal, 255. Before the meal, 98. After the meal, 102. Start writing it down and then look at it. What's going to happen with a month of checking your blood sugars? Don't even cut your carbs necessarily. Just take a whole month and research your own body and your response to carbohydrates and your response to foods. What's going to happen is two things. Number one, you will be inundated with information about how foods affect you. Not how they affect me, how they affect you. You will have information you never had before. And you'll never get that information just going to a nutritionist class or talking to your doctor for about 10 minutes after he tells you you've got diabetes. You'll never get it from that. You will get it from a month of testing your blood sugar. Yeah, I know strips can be expensive or a CGM can be expensive. Invest in yourself, my friend. You won't have to do this forever. I mean, you should be testing your blood sugar off and on uh, throughout the rest of your life, but not at that rate. I don't test it that often, but for this, for this first month, you should. And you're going to find so much information and you're going to have the data. You won't need me to tell you what to do. You won't need <laughs> a, a Dr. Neil Bernard or anybody else. You'll have Mike Demeter's input on it. And he's not biased. So much of us, we have our biases. I do. Everybody does. Mike Demeter has no bias. He's just a machine. He's not even a real person. Sorry about that, Mike. He's just a machine. But he can tell you what you need to know. So you're going to get information, but more than information, information is wonderful and you need it. But even more important, you will suddenly have motivation. When you see those numbers go up, 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 when you eat a high carb meal and stay almost the same, almost flat, when you eat a low carb meal, motivation will magically appear in you. You may say, well, I'm not a motivated guy. I've never been very motivated, never been very self-controlled. I just don't have it, Dennis. You don't need it. If you start testing and you've got a sufficient fear of diabetes, <laughs> you've got all you need with a month's worth of testing. And after that, you go to town, you cut those carbs and there's a lot of things you can do. And, and uh, if you watch my channel, you'll learn about some of those. But for that first month, for most of you, the very best thing you can do is just forget about Anybody you've heard, for, forget about any future steps you're going to take to beat diabetes. Take a month to invest in your life. Invest in a glucose meter. Invest in the time. Invest in the, the strips. And find out what's going on in your body. And my friend, you will be on your way to beating diabetes. If you've recently been diagnosed with diabetes and you've just discovered this channel, let me recommend that you go to our uploads page, which will give you access to every diabetic video we've posted since we began. As you work your way through all our videos, I believe you'll find the help you need. A link to our uploads page is in the description.